This is our first graph as we begin the, the section on competitive or semi-competitive market structures. This graph and the set that follows on determining profit or loss are fundamental to all the graphs we're going to be looking at. This first graph entitled Marginal Analysis takes a look at the performance of a company making a couple of assumptions. First, look at their demand curve. Notice it's flat. It's perfectly elastic. What that's telling us is that the firm can produce and sell as many units as it wants at $8 each. It can sell its entire output for $8 per unit. Since every time it sells another product, it receives an additional $8. $8 is also the firm's marginal revenue, that is the extra revenue for each additional product that's produced. On this graph also, we show a marginal cost curve. It's got its traditional positive slope, indicating as the firm increases its level of production, the cost for each additional unit, the marginal cost of each additional unit, will increase. Let's take a look at what we're talking about. Suppose the firm's operating at an output level where it is producing unit number 16. Unit number 16, we read up to the marginal cost curve and over. We say that that unit cost us to produce five dollars. That's the marginal cost or the extra cost of producing unit number 16. However, remember that we can sell this product and generate additional revenue or marginal revenue of eight dollars so clearly it's worth our while to produce and sell that unit we'll earn three dollars to the good for selling that unit look at unit number seventeen reading up to marginal cost and over we see the marginal cost is rising to make it simple let's call that six dollars but we can still sell this unit at eight dollars so we still are two dollars to the good for selling that unit so we should go ahead and produce it and sell it what we are looking for here is the optimal or profit maximizing level of production. Look at the graph. You can see that as we produce unit number 18 or unit number 19, while its cost is going up, its marginal cost for each additional unit, the marginal revenue is still more than the marginal cost. So we would continue to produce units 18, unit 19. Take a look now at unit number 20. What's going on there? The marginal cost curve intersects the marginal revenue curve. That's the way you want to look at this. What tell, that tells us is that unit number 20 has a marginal cost of $8 and a marginal revenue of $8, so should we produce it? And the key to that answer is in recognizing that in economics, when we use the term cost, as in the marginal cost of unit number 20, that cost includes a reasonable profit or return to the seller. And that's not like accounting. We're talking economic costs. So it would be to the seller's advantage he should produce unit number 20. He should sell it for $8 because embedded in his marginal cost of $8 is a reasonable profit. Reason, reasonable may vary across different industries. Look now at unit number 21. What's going to happen? Unit number 21 is going to have a marginal cost that is above its marginal revenue. In fact, let's call it $10. What's going to happen if the firm produces this unit? They're going to take a loss. It's going to cost them ten dollars, they're going to sell it for eight dollars, they're losing two dollars on that unit. They do not want to produce unit number 21. It's a loser. So they're going to restrain their production back at unit number 20 and back at that point at which marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Right there. From now on, you and I in our class are going to refer to that intersection of marginal cost and marginal revenue. We're going to rec refer to that as point alpha. That's going to be their profit maximizing level of output. And in loss cases, it's going to be their minimal or minimized loss level of output. That's always going to be the indicator for how many units to produce. I will say it in class again and again. Alpha tells us quantity. We will look initially on every graph we look at. We, the first thing we'll look at is for where is point alpha. And we, that will tell us the optimal quantity to produce. This is the second graph on our marginal analysis uh, lesson here. Same picture, perfectly elastic marginal revenue and demand curve. When the demand curve is flat, it is always the same as the marginal revenue curve. We've left the numbers in place that we just looked at. What I want to show you real quick here is look at what would happen. I changed the numbers on the bottom just to make it a little more applicable. Look on the bottom. Suppose the company restrained their production kept it back at 160 units. 
Are they going to be maximizing their profit? And the answer is no. They could be making money on each additional unit, out to number 170, out to 80, 180, 190, out to unit number 200. So if they stop their production below the optimal level, if they produce 160 rather than 200, they're giving up profit on each unit or gain on each, each unit they could have made. So if they hold back their production below point alpha, below the 200 level, we're going to say they have foregone profit due to underproducing, producing less than the optimal amount. By the same token, if they produce beyond point alpha more than 200 units, in this case say 210 units, they're going to be losing money on every unit from number 201 all the way through number 210. And so that accumulated loss that they're going to suffer for producing too much is the red shaded area, which we, which we will refer to as lost profit due to overproduction. This is profit they've lost because they produced too many, as opposed to profit they could have made on the left in green if, that they suffered because they produced too many.